Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So we all know Warren Buffett as the greatest investor of all time. His company, Berkshire Hathaway, has been one of the greatest investments of all time. Uh, if you had bought Berkshire Hathaway Class A shares in the 60s, you would have been paying probably somewhere around the $10 mark. If we fast forward all the way through to, to today, Berkshire Hathaway Class A shares are trading at north of $335,000 a share. So um, that's how you basically become one of the richest people in the world, um, as Warren Buffett did. He grew the equity of Berkshire Hathaway at an enormous rate. And there are some real core kind of fundamental principles that he used to do that. And a lot of them can really be applied to individual investors like you and me, um, who are just trying to go about our you know, everyday financial lives and improve things uh, here and there where possible. Uh, this video isn't going to make you a billionaire or anything like that, um, but it should hopefully give you some tips that Berkshire Hathaway has used to, to grow their net worth and the net worth of their shareholders, um, because really pretty much all of them do apply to individual investors as well. So hope you enjoy the video. Uh, this is a concept that I like to call Berkshire Hathaway in your life. Um, it really has helped me a lot and I hope that it helps you as well. If you've got any other tips or anything like that or any questions, definitely drop them in the comments below. Uh, but for now, let's get into it. So the first thing you've got to do, um, there's really no more simple way of saying this other than you have to make money. So um, Berkshire Hathaway owns several operating businesses that they own 100% of. Uh, the likes of Dairy Queen, Seas Candy, Geico, these are all businesses that Birch Hathaway has, has acquired over a long period of time. Uh, and all of these businesses throw off cash and constantly push cash back to uh, back to Omaha, as Warren Buffett would say, and gives Buffett a lot of cash to redeploy into new investments and buying new companies. So to really get that started, um, there's no other way to say this than you've just you've just got to make money and you've got to save as much of it as possible. So whether that's from your day job or from starting your own business or having a side hustle like I'm doing right here, I'm about to get my first kind of paycheck from YouTube uh, this month. If you're interested in seeing a video on that, let me know. Um, there's not a whole lot of money YouTubers in New Zealand, so um, let me know if you're interested in that. Uh, but basically, you've got to make money and you've got to save as much of it as humanly possible. Doesn't matter if you make 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000 or a million dollars a year, if you're spending also a million dollars a year, you're doing uh, worse than someone that makes 50 grand a year and can save 10 of that. So it really matters what you keep uh, and that's the core principle also used at Berkshire Hathaway. They don't have a lot of unnecessary expenses. They don't have big HR departments and huge admin teams. Buffett doesn't even employ an analyst um, at Berkshire Hathaway. So expenses are very low. They can save as much of that money as they possibly can that comes in through the front door. And that's really the first tip. So I've got a money saving video already on YouTube. I'll link it up in one of these corners. Always forget which one it is, but it'll be up in one of those corners. Uh, so that's the first tip. I'm not going to go into huge detail on that. Um, but basically, the more money that you can get coming in the door and the lower your expenses can be, the better uh, when you're looking to sort of Berkshire Hathaway your life. So that's tip number one. Let's get into tip number two. Tip number two to Berkshire Hathaway in your life is to build an investment portfolio that increases your equity over time. So uh, with Berkshire Hathaway, that's obviously been through um, purchasing stocks. Buffett's often renowned as the greatest stock market investor that uh, there's ever been, but he has also acquired wholly owned businesses. He's also acquired real estate in his personal portfolio. He's also acquired farmland, several assets. Um, but really, there's a couple of core fundamental principles that we talk about all the time on this channel that he's applying to every single one of those investment classes. So firstly, he's looking to buy something for less than it's worth. He's looking for an undervalued um, asset and something that provides him a margin of safety. And the second thing is he's looking for an adequate return. So a lot of that is achieved by buying something for less than it's worth. Uh, the other side of that equation is looking at the cash flow of that business. Um, how much cash can that 
investment return to me, again, whether that's a farm or an investment property or anything like that, looking at how much cash that business can return to me versus how much I have to pay for it and stacking up whether that's something that's going to be beneficial for you over the long term. And on this channel, we often talk about stock market investing specifically, and there's really a couple of ways that you can build equity through your stock market investing. The first one is capital gains, so your stock's going up over time through buying growing profitable businesses. And the second one is through companies returning capital to shareholders. So that may be through something like a dividend, again, that you can potentially reinvest and get more dividends later on or through the company doing things like buying back their own shares. So um, that essentially has the same effect as you getting paid a dividend and reinvesting it in that company or in that ETF or whatever your vehicle is. Um, basically, it, inc it increases your percentage ownership in that company. You're entitled to a larger percentage of the cash flows for, for following years. And again, it's going to help to grow your equity over time. So uh, that is the second tip on Berkshire Hathaway in your life. Let's get into the next one. The next tip and the thing that has really set Buffett apart from other investors and has propelled him to the top of rich lists and all those sorts of things is the way that he actually describes his everyday job. So Buffett describes his job at Birch Hathaway as to allocate capital effectively. And essentially what that means is as these businesses and investments constantly um, throw money at him, he has to do something with that cash. So he has to allocate that capital to uh, either just sit in cash or to new investments or whatever he really thinks is the best thing to do to grow that money over the long term. So he's allocating that capital as effectively as possible. And we really have to do the same thing. And the way I like to think about that personally Again, there's several investment strategies out there, but the way I think about that personally is I have a job of finding probably one to two investment ideas per year. That's the way I'm really looking at it. Uh, that saves me from really making rash decisions and getting FOMO on all these different companies that are going massively up or that I think are, you know, all of a sudden have gotten really cheap or anything like that. I just kind of have to slow myself down and realize that over an investment lifetime, if I can make one to two really good decisions per year, uh, that's going to stack up to a lot of good decisions over an investment lifetime and over a significant sort of period of time. So that's the way I like to look at it. And that's the way that Buffett has really done it in the past. Uh, when the stock market was really cheap, he would make far more decisions than that per year. Uh, when the stock market is more expensive, like it is, uh, in my humble opinion at the moment, uh, he's made far less decisions in terms of making new investments. So that's the way I also like to think about things, is to really just try and make one or two good decisions a year. Um, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's sort of sidekick at Berkshire Hathaway, often says that Warren and Charlie and Berkshire have not made a whole bunch more money than other people because they're smarter than other people. Um, they simply try to be less dumb. So <laughs> that's really what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to avoid mistakes as much as possible, make uh, infrequent decisions, but good decisions uh, nonetheless. So that's that tip. Uh, don't be in a rush. Allocate capital effectively and make it your mission in your financial life to make uh, as few mistakes as possible rather than trying to hit it out of the park with every single uh, sort of investment decision. So that's that tip. Let's get on to the next one. So the next tip, uh, this one actually comes from Charlie Munger, who uh, we just mentioned before. And uh, the numbers probably, the numbers that he uses in this analogy uh, probably aren't going to be all that relevant for me and you as my guess. I hope they are, but I'm guessing they're probably not, but they might be one day. And basically that quote from Charlie Munger is that it always pays to keep a couple million dollars in checking. And that uh, essentially means you should always have some sort of cash reserve on the side. Uh, from a personal finance perspective, there's a couple of reasons for that. So um, first, you want to have an emergency fund so that if something goes horribly wrong, you have a massive car breakdown or for whatever reason, you, you suddenly need cash. You've got that cash on the side and you're not in a position where you have to sell investments at poor prices or anything like that. Um, so that's the first thing. But from an investing perspective, it always pays to keep at least some portion of the portfolio. Again, not financial advice here, but it always pays to keep some portion of the portfolio in cash or something that's 
easily available to jump on opportunities as they occur. We know that stock market crashes happen. Uh, we know that individual company share prices uh, sometimes tank for various reasons. And at those times, we really want to be able to jump all over those opportunities. Like I said, we're trying to make decisions relatively infrequently with my personal strategy. So it always pays to, to keep some amount of cash on the side. Uh, obviously, in a perfect world, we'd have all of our money working for us and fantastic investments, but that's just not practical at all times. So we've got to keep some portion of cash uh, to be available to jump on opportunities as they come up. So always keep a couple million in checking. Uh, for me personally, unfortunately, that's not a couple of million, at least just not yet. Um, but keeping some money ready to go uh, for opportunities as they do arise. So uh, let's get into the last tip. And so the final tip on how to Berkshire Hathaway your life is to be a constant learner. This is something that really stands out when you first start to dig in deeper on what has made these guys successful. They have often described their jobs as basically coming into the office and reading all day. <laughs> That's basically all they do. They're reading a mix of, you know, financial uh, news, books, uh, you know, general reading on science and all these different things really to expand the universe, constantly improve and expand their circle of competence when it comes to investing. So being able to understand more businesses and improve the number of opportunities that are potentially available to them. So be a constant learner. Uh, as you can see behind me, I'm trying to do that through uh, reading a lot more books, uh, which is really something I hadn't done a lot of up until uh, uh, a couple of years ago of that. So um, be a constant learner. It will no doubt improve your financial life, whether that be through reading, YouTube, audiobooks, podcasts, all of the above, ideally. Um, definitely get into that. And the last thing I just want to say before we go is I want to give a quick shout out to Jason Rothman over at the After Dinner Investor Podcast. He's actually the person who I first heard come up with this concept of Berkshire Hathaway in your life. So thank you to Jason. Go and check out his podcast if you haven't already. Uh, but that's all from me for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.